we will discuss the asynchronous set and reset functions of a flip-flop. In the previous video, we showed that the S and R inputs result in set and reset actions that are triggered by the rising or falling edge of a clock signal. In a logic diagram, the triggering of these inputs can be shown as a trigger switch applied at each input. This switch permits the propagation of the input only when a brief trigger signal is applied. In practical flip-flop design, we wish to have an asynchronous set and reset inputs in addition to the triggered inputs. These asynchronous inputs are not controlled by the trigger and override all other signals. The asynchronous inputs, a set and a reset, are shown as control inputs to the flip-flop, whereas the triggered synchronous inputs are shown as data lines. The actions of all these inputs are shown in the timing diagram. The synchronous set and reset are performed by the S and R inputs. When these inputs are changed to set, the primary output Q will transit to 1, but only upon the arrival of the next trigger. By contrast, the asynchronous set and reset are independent of the triggers and override all other inputs. Thus, while the A reset input is active, Q is immediately reset to zero and remains zero while A reset is active. Likewise, while A set is active, Q is set to one. The asynchronous set and reset in this example are active high because these functions are activated when A set and A reset are 1. In the function table, the asynchronous inputs are seen to be active high because the presence of a 1 at these inputs executes the designated function. We also note that these control inputs override all other inputs. The asynchronous inputs may also be designed to be active low. For active low inputs, asynchronous set and reset occurs when the corresponding input is zero. As before, active low control inputs are indicated by bubbles and the bar label.